I'm on the west coast of Italy, right off the island of Elba on the mainland. And with me today is Ferrari's new GTC4 Lusso T. Now, that's quite a mouthful, it's quite a handful of a name, but let's break it down and understand what this car really is. Of course, as you can see, it's based on the earlier FF, their V12 engine, four-wheel drive, four-seat supercar, and this one gets a V8 engine. Now, GTC4 means it's a four-seater, Lusso means a more luxurious four-seater, and T stands for the new turbo engine. It's a V8, it gets a twin turbo, 610 horsepower, We've got the whole of Tuscany at our disposal today. Let's see what this new car is like to drive. No driver of this car, however, can commence without a bit of a technical exam. And since this is an unconventional Ferrari, let's dispense with convention and start from the back. Now, unlike the earlier FF, Ferrari have taken out the four-wheel drive system of this car. That saved a considerable amount of weight, but what they've done to give it a bit of agility, because this car has an almost three meter long wheelbase, and basically that would mean it wants to go straight all the time, is that they've given it rear wheel steering. But first up, I get into the rear seat just to see how well it works as a four-seater. Surprisingly, ingress isn't too difficult because of the long doors. And you don't need to be a world-class contortionist to clamber past the front seats either. Sitting in the back, however, does feel kind of unique. It's nice and snug. And since I'm cocooned in what feels like a giant leather glove, I'm pretty comfy. But this is a Ferrari, and that means all the good stuff flows through the steering wheel and the driver's seat. Now, first impressions on this narrow country road are, of course, of size. This is a sizable car. It's got a three-meter wheelbase, almost three meter long. It's extremely wide, especially with the mirrors, and I'm just about fitting in this lane. But because of the rear wheel steering, because it has that sort of agility where it points it in from the back, it sort of feels like a much shorter and much more agile car. So when you get a corner or a set of corners like this, here we go, it just shrinks around you. And it's on the tighter stuff like this where the four-wheel steering really comes into its own. These are the sort of roads where you'd need a small hatchback, a small powerful hatchback to really enjoy it. But even in this car, I'm sort of able to string together a good set of corners. And that is something special. What's also incredibly good is this really fearsome steering. Faster, longer corners, however, are its natural environment. It's on roads like these that the GT4 Lusso really shines. Long, fast sweeping bends, bends where you can place the car, settle it in the corner, and then accelerate out, really using the torque of the engine. Just sublime. And once you're fully in sync with this car, once you know exactly how much throttle to give, you know where to brake, you know how much to turn in, where to start accelerating out, this car just drives like any other Ferrari for a long, long time. Crisp, clean, perfect, just what you want that really accurate steering, that explosive power out of corners. The confidence is just amazing. I can't believe you can drive such a big car so hard on such a small road. And that rear wheel steering has a big role to play. Also essential if this car wants to succeed as a four-seater is ride quality. As with all Ferraris in recent times, this car comes with their Magna ride. So when I put the Manatino in comfort, what happens is the dampers adjust a hundred times a second. And that's what gives it the real suppleness that you're getting from this car. Now, some of these roads are pretty much like the ones we have back home. Lots of gouges, lots of ruts. Of course, they aren't as deep and your wheel doesn't go right in, but you still feel like that, a lot of the bumps. And this car has the ability to take the edge off. 
The Lusso T also impresses at low speeds. Its smooth and fluid steering and its nicely weighted brakes make it an absolute pleasure to drive. The heart of any Ferrari, however, is its engine. And what an engine this is! Yes, there is a bit of turbo lag, but get around that and you're soon in the magic zone. Once you've passed 3,500 RPM, the torque is just epic. It just pulls the car forward, the car leans on its back wheels and it just shoots forward. My God, that's a seriously scary speed. Okay, here we go. Just a long, hard pull. Keep your foot down and just, just capable of doing insane speeds. You do miss the top end, you do miss that 9,000 RPM crispness. You do miss that instant throttle response. But after a bit, this turbo engine really does have something extra in the mid-range. This car may be short on cylinders, but performance is almost as strong as the 12-cylinder version. How has Ferrari managed this? Simple. It uses technology to cheat physics. Get a load of this. The turbos use twin scroll technology, making it feel like there are four turbos at work here. The engine uses a flat plane crankshaft for better responses. And this V8 also uses an unreal five sparks per power stroke. At the rear, you also get progressive traction control or F1 track. There's an electronic differential that helps you put power down cleanly and taking control of all these various systems is Ferrari's SSC3 or side slip control that helps manage the car in a slide. The Lusso also puts 54% of its weight on its rear wheels, so there's plenty of traction in the back. Ferrari's GTC4 Lusso T is many horses in one. Part load carrying workhorse, part thoroughbred racehorse, part agile and quick to turn polo pony, it fuses the best bits of each into a new sub-breed. It even has a 450 litre boot. How about that? It won't quite deliver the pace of a bona fide sports car. It's more a 2 plus 2 rather than a full-fledged four-seater. And it will cost 4.2 crores when it goes on sale here. But if you're willing to compromise a bit, the Ferrari experience can also be had in the guise of a four-seater, without the expense and the prodigious thirst of a full-fledged V12. The semi-practical Ferrari? Yes. That mythical beast actually does exist. 